Hey everybody, Bill Owen from MMPC Tech at the Mod Zoo. It's finally finished our MZ2 evolution of a Mod Monkey custom gaming PC. Now, if you missed the previous videos, Mod Zoo staffers Mosquito and Captain Curry Sauce and myself partnered with OriginPC.com to customize their sexy Genesis full tower with a sports car inspired theme. What do you think? Does it look cool? I hate to see it go, but you know what? Somebody's got an opportunity to win this thing. Mark your calendar for November 17th, 2015 because Origin PC is giving away the custom PC that we created. And if you watched our previous three episodes highlighting stages of this build, you'll have an advantage in answering questions that Origin PC will be asking about the build. Now to help you out, at the end of this video, I've linked the first video and you'll easily find the other two. Now we're going to head over to the Smart Computer Store in Bloomington, Minnesota, where Mosquito and Captain Curry Sauce are going to have an overview of all the Cool Lands cooling components that they sent us for the build. Hey everyone, I'm Jesse, aka Captain Curry Sauce from the Mod Zoo. And I'm Mosquito, also known as Chris. Mosquito bees. It's that time of the year again. I know! Mosquito season. Mosquito. So, I mean, what are we doing here today at Smart Computer Store in Bloomington? We're having a grill out. Can't you, can't you tell? I can't smell anything yet. Oh boy. The scary thing is that that's all he's had so far. <laughs> hey, I just started, okay? I'm done with one. I put it away, so. Ah, hydration is important. <laughs> So, apart from the grill out, what is all this? What's going on here? We have a table full of Coolance parts. So, thank you Coolance for supporting our Origin build. That's right. So, this is some more water cooling parts for MZ2. We have a pair of the Coolance 240, well, this one's a 240 millimeter, this one's a 360 millimeter radiator. And the 360 will be going in the midsection of yeah. the case, going above where the power supply was and still is. And then the 240 radiator goes in the front and we will have a mounting bracket on the front of the case in the uh, dry bay areas for that radiator. Yes. Hovering all that would be this beast. Now again, I will say this is probably one of the most well-crafted dual bay, dual pump reservoir, bay reservoirs I've held in my life. I shouldn't say seen because I've seen it online before. <laughs> but so this would, we will be using this to power two D5 pumps. And PM, the, these are the PMP450 model from Coolant. So these will be mounted in the Coolant 452, the X2 reservoir, the latest re uh, revision of it. Chris, what are we using to cool the CPU? Uh, we have a Coolands water block, and we also have matching water blocks, full cover blocks for our two GTX 980s. These are Bill's fingerprints, I'm pretty sure. Two of these Coolands 980 water blocks for our two GTX 980s. And we also have the coolant bridges, so this way we can, depending on how we want to run it, allow us to run our loop in parallel. Before I go into the fittings, I gotta mention these new MNPC Tech PETG tubing that comes in variety of sizes. You have your choice of 12 inches and 24, so you don't have to worry about paying, you know, Uber shipping cost on six-foot-long pieces of tube. Been there. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. want, oh, my tubing is only going to cost me $12. Yes. And then the invoice shows up for shipping, and next thing you know, your $12 worth of tubing costs you $30. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for the hardline, sadly, Coolance does not have any hardline fittings at the moment. Not for acrylic. Yes. They do. They're one of the few that I've found that actually have specific for copper tubing. Yes. But not for acrylic. Not for acrylic. So we're going to be using some Primo Chill revolver, right, fittings, and we believe that these, the black chrome, will match our overall build scheme and the color scheme perfectly well. So we'll be using these, and for our 
adapters, 90 degree adapters, snake adapters. Pretty cool, eh? See, you can kind of do whatever angle you kind of need. So these are pretty nifty, come in really handy. So these are all coolant fittings. Drain valve, probably one of the best drain valves out there. I've been using these in my builds for the longest time. It's the only kind I buy. Yeah, pretty simple. What I like is they've maintained their quality on this. Feels nice and bulky. When they're up, they also have one of the best flows that I've seen. Too. Yes. Like because yes. I've used a couple other ones where it's like, oh man, it's like trying to drain through a coffee straw. Yeah. So. Non shell pass. what we're at here what, five and a quarter and that's empty dry weight piece of cake Staff build project. This is Bill periscoping. Oh, We're working with Origin PC. <laughs> We're going to give away this system when it's all done. Mod monkeys don't need jigs. No. We use our God given jigs. <laughs> Take it whatever way you want to. from the bottom 360 radiator into here. Now, the reason why this is at this height is so it clears, the pipe clears the DDR if you have to take the DDR out. From there, we got a snake on the water block going to the GPU so you can straight shot and then from here, back into the reservoir. Nice and clean and simple. When filling the loop, you need to open the drain valve, remove the cap as shown here. The T-handle is aligned with the pipe and place some absorbent towel or rag right here. Then remove the two caps in the front reservoir and take a compression fitting with some tubing. Fasten it in, use a funnel to fill the loop with distilled water. Having the cap up here will help allow air escape and you're going to fill until you see water come out of the drain valve and once you do, close the drain valve. You're doing this to allow air out, otherwise if you don't do this, you're going to run into some problems and it's going to take a long time to fill the loop. Okay, what we're going to 
to do is prime the two pumps before we turn it on. And I've got both the fill caps off on the front of the reservoir I'm using distilled water. We're going to fill it up, oh, maybe about halfway. Make sure that the pumps both get water and then gently move the PC back and forth so we make sure the water gets in there and primes the pumps before we turn it on. After priming the two Thermaltec Lang D5 pumps, our liquid loop is now running. It's running at the lowest setting because these pumps have the variable speed control on them, which is really nice. And what I like about this setup, this pump reservoir combo, is that you've got maximum flow in a very compact space versus needing uh, an individual pump somewhere in the chassis or a cylinder style reservoir. So here's an overview of the final layout for the liquid loop. We're going from the five and a quarter bay reservoir with the two D5 water pumps to a 240 radiator mounted in the front behind the customized bezel with the louvered vents. And then we're going into a 360 radiator in the midsection. And because we have it there, we've relocated the power supply to the floor of the Genesis with an extension on it and a data cage down here for your SSDs or hard drives. And from the 360 in the midsection, we're going up to the 4790K CPU. And notice that there's space right under the PTG tubing so you can access your HyperX DDR if you need to take it out or upgrade it later. And from our CPU water block, we go into the two EVGA 980 GTX video cards with the Coolance bridge and back into our pump reservoir combination. This was a very efficient system to come up with for somebody. It's reliable, easy to deal with, simple, or as I like to say, purpose built. Well, we're going with the uh, Intel 4790K, and we're using the Asus Maxim Maximus 7 Ranger for the motherboard. Um, we will be switching out the RAM. Uh, we, we have blue right now, but we will be switching it out for silver later, just so it kind of matches with our color scheme a little bit better. 